Oh wait, maybe this does it. There we go. I think I got him on now. Lenny? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh wait, your audio. Wait, maybe maybe I can maybe I can unmute. There we go. There <laughs> we did it. Oh man, every time I turn this on, I have trouble um, getting a panelist on. It's like so mildly uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> Everybody's staring at you, dude. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, all I can see is the text of people, but it feels very intimidating. Thank you guys for waiting. I feel like there's, you only can do that, only invite people once you're actually on. Um, anyways. Thank you so much for showing up. We're gonna do um, five or five steps to creating killer textures. And to be honest, it's actually, we're gonna do three steps to creating killer textures and then we're going to cover also like some um, myths about creating textures, which we're kind of considering yep. steps because you don't have to, you can discard them. Um, one of those being that textures, in order to print them nice and clean, need to be vector, which turns out is a huge myth. Um, so what I'm going to do is well first I'm going to make sure one last time can everyone hear Lenny I know you guys can hear me can you guys hear Lenny as well check 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 yo okay yeah, that would be a lot of yeses holy crap that was fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's 171 people so yeah lots of people like yep yep Okay, cool. Um, so Lenny, before, before we like get into it, can you give us like the, uh, the one, two minute rundown on who you are? Yes. So Lenny Terenzi, 45 years old. Uh, I know my camera, by the way, is kind of doing the angle thing. That's why, that way I, I'm using a separate camera so I can turn it around when we make a texture. So I'm not trying to be impersonal by not looking at you. I'm looking at the screen with the camera on the side. So. Anyway, Lenny Terenzi, 45 years old, graphic designer, illustrator, screen printer, workshopper, team builder, uh, creative community guy. Uh, I work in Durham, North Carolina uh, for the last 18 years, almost 19 years under the name Hey Monkey, um, and just doing my thing. And why should, why should people um, trust you slash believe you when it comes to creating textures? Um, because if they don't, their lives will be miserable. <laughs> um, okay. So a real reason, I mean, so, I mean, I'm a screen printer, so I use them a lot. Number one, you know, a lot of people want to add that little bit of, of grit and grime uh, to their work. Um, I've also been doing it a long time. So, I mean, there's something to say for, for experience. I'm old. Um, I mean, look at just the texture in my hair alone has got to like prove, you know, and say for something, um, I don't know. I've just kind of, I just use them so much and I've worked with them so much, both vector and um, bitmap. And then, you know, obviously we just created the, the product together and I've used a lot of the stuff that you've made. So I've just used a lot and made a lot and sort of come up with my own, um, certainly not be all end all, but sort of best usages and things like that, that, you know, have, really sped up and changed the way I've worked in the last few years. Okay, cool. And, and so you guys know, um, Lenny, um, the, the reason that I found Lenny particularly valuable to talk about this is because Lenny has printed the shirts for Retro Supply for, gosh, years now. And he created a, a new pack we have. It's called the Authentic Screen, Screen Printers Toolkit. And it's it started, the idea started as it really just being textures um, that, that could be used and be crisp and clean for adding like that kind of grit, kind of like the, the inks are flaking off and whatnot um, on a print of a shirt. And it started as just a texture pack and he really ended up practically writing a book on how to do that. Um, so you can see that here. Um, I mean, sorry, I was... Send that to everybody. Um, there we go. You can check that out here. Um, of course, if it, if it looks cool to you, it has tons of textures. It has invoicing forms. It has mock-ups. It has tons of textures in it. These are, and these were literally proven to work. 
Um, I mean, we, of course, he knew they'd work, but he used them on my shirts. I've seen them. They look fantastic. In fact, recently we got an email um, from a customer and they said, dude, your shirt, like the screen printer screwed up. It like has like areas where like the ink didn't come through because it, they legitimately looked real. Um, so if anyone like wants to make textures, but also just would rather have like a shortcut, you can grab that. Um, okay, so let's move forward. So we just said, hey, you made it. Welcome. Yay. This is the toolkit we're talking about. The URL I just gave you is for it. And let's get started. So part one is the Hey Monkey Guide to Creating Textures. So uh, Lenny, I will let you go with that. Can you share with us how to create textures, um, particularly um, on a budget, whether you're using things around your house or um, with a very cheap run by the craft store? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so th the great thing for me about, and anybody about creating textures is we have the best texture making, uh, you know, texture capturing device. Almost every one of us has it probably sitting right next to us right now. And that's our phones, you know, with, with the camera on it. Um, I've seen a lot of other texture workshops and things where, you know, people are taking their, their, their big DLSR or DSLR. I can never remember the damn order of the letters, um, cameras and all that, but you know, we're making kind of gritty grimy textures. So like, I like to remove as many barriers as possible to making textures. So we always have our phones. We always have stuff around us. You know, it's super easy to snap stuff. So first thing first is just, you know, grabbing your phone and just looking around, you know, your house, your room, always first um, for stuff to be able to, you know, to snap textures um, with, I mean, I'm going to put this little chat box here. There we go. Um, so that, you know, that's the first way, right? Photo sources and everything. And, and we'll talk about processing those later. Um, but then the other way, and I'm going to kind of start moving this camera around. So pardon me for any uh, motion sickness we start to is right there, right? Mm -hmm. All these little analog tools, you know, pens and brushes and sponges. And I'm going to go ahead and, and make a few and show you and we're going to process them and everything. Um, you know, right now, and if for those of you who, who had bought the, the pack already, every one of those textures, almost every one of those textures were made, hold on, let me get my little tripod here so the camera doesn't fall over, were, were made like this using analog, uh, analog techniques. Um, somebody said the link is broken, by the way, Dustin, in the chat. I don't know if... I just, um, I just tested it. That link is not broken. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So we're good. So the... the First thing first, right, with, with textures, doesn't matter what color we're going to make them, how we're going to use them, right? They need to be black. So I just, a, a long time ago, ran to, you know, Michael's or AC Moore, any craft store, and just buy a big old chunky bottle of just black acrylic paint, just cheap, cheap stuff. Like, you know, this is practically kids' craft paint, right? Um, get it all shaken up and just... There we go. Good. You can see that really well. Awesome. And then from there, right, this is just our palette right here. So this isn't actually, you know, eventually this can become a texture, but we just get some ink on there. And so for this one, I'm using just a foam brush, just like a, a uh, you know, cheapy, you know, cheapy foam brush. So here we go. Got a little bit of a palette. Let me bring over another piece of paper. Right, and just and just so you guys know, um, there should be an area, and tell me if you don't see it, there should be an area where you can ask a question. Feel free to put your questions there. That way other people can upvote them and we can uh, make sure to answer any questions where we're not clarifying things. Yep. Um, so you'll see, right, I just grabbed, like made a little palette of the ink and then I just start brushing on paper and then I'll grab another piece of paper because each time you do it, you're going to, here, let me bring this one over. Got a little bit of a cramped space here, so, right? So now I'm just taking another sheet with the brush being a little bit drier. You'll notice I'm doing this all on um, eight, and a half, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, that's just because it's easy to keep contained. It's gonna be easier to put it on a scanner if we're actually scanning them in, you know, on a scanner. Um, 
and you want to make sure that with uh, with textures that you um, sort of make them full bleed, right? So I'm making sure that I actually leave space, you know, around the edges of the paper, so you don't have like a completely unnatural flat edge because you brush the texture to the edge of the paper. Um, some scanners can do legal size paper too. That's totally fine. You just want to make sure your whole texture can be scanned without like sharp edges and stuff like that, right? So there's that, I'm gonna throw that in there. And then also, again, this like all this stuff, all this stuff you see here, guys, by the way, I think cost me like $15 maybe at like AC Moore and Michaels. Like, you know, you can get packs of natural sponges um, in all different kinds. You know, here's some, these, these literally were the sponges used to create the authentic screen printers toolkit to start, you know, so that's actual ink. Um, so yeah, so then you can just kind of, you can even kind of change stuff up. So what I'm doing here is just picking up more ink from my little palette page. Uh, kind of come on here, you know, there was one that I sort of brushed and I'm going to kind of stamp over it. You know, you just want to create just kind of a random, you know, modeled type texture. Let's see here. Let's make another one. And Lenny, just to clarify, uh, someone had asked, what kind of paper are you using? I'm assuming that's just like printer paper. Like literally printer copy paper, like just, you know, the cheapest stuff you can get from Staples, like in a box. There's nothing special um, about it. Although if you do have like some good textured, like construction paper and stuff like that, I mean, once you kind of get that a photo taken or get it scanned in, I mean, that can totally, um, you know, add to the, to the kind of the grit of the texture. Um, as well. Yep, I can attest. So I, I've made tons of tons and tons of textures for Retro Supply, and I've used everything from I've used a lot of computer paper. Um, I've also just bought all sorts of sketching paper, watercolor paper, um, canvas, uh, cardboard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it all. Just chip. I love chipboard, cardboard, and chipboard because then they you know, gives you just a really nice. Um, speckled texture by the time you sort of process it. Right, so now here's like using the sponge, you know, streaky. So you can just, you know, all the different kind of things that you can do, you know, to just get them, right, presented and, and ready. And even just this, this solid black one, you know, can be great for creating you know, a frame or an overlay because we can invert it. So like literally in the what, four minutes I've been talking, you know, I mean, that's the fun thing. Sometimes if you just want to sit down at night, you know, let me grab something else here to make. If you just want to sit down at night and feel creative, but you're like, what the hell do I want to paint? What do I want to do? Like you just sit there and do this. Right. And, it, and it's, you know, you sort of get that, that itch out. So here I am literally just a crappy little uh, one and a half inch brush. I'm going to load it up with paint. Anytime you see me doing this off camera, all I'm doing is grabbing um, the paint from that piece of paper that I squeezed it out on. Nothing, nothing fancy. And um, it's like, so, so someone, uh, Dylan had asked, he had said, any thoughts on using chalk or tracing paper to get impressions off of the textures, like sidewalks or walls? Um, totally. I thought it'd be to like, yes, right? I mean, to me, there's like anything. Like this is just kind of what I'm, you know, what I'm doing right now with like the paint and stuff, but absolutely texture. So there was a lot of, um, you know, photographs of stuff too. Um, there was a lot of the textures in the, in the pack that I released uh, with you. I think there was, a, um, I believe we sent out like to everybody who bought it, we sent out like a bonus thing, like a week after they bought, right. And it was called studio textures. Mm -hmm. And all I did was walk around my studio with um, my camera and take pictures of like the table where I mix inks where, you know, thousands of drops and spills of ink have happened and the table where I pour emulsion for to make the screens and emulsion dripped all over the table and stuff like that. And they ended up being some of my like favorite, you know, textures. Or um, something I've tried that uh, has worked really well is, uh, I don't know if any, if you guys are familiar with Vaughn Glitchka, he had in a book um, and then in like some conversation shared with me that He'll oftentimes use uh, cookie sheets, like old used cookie sheets have really great oh, textures. Yeah. I've literally gotten cookie sheets and put them into my scanner and scan them or taken photographs of them. Um, I also like, I have like a Turkish coffee. 
um, cooker that I use on my stove. And I, I cut that and I literally put it on my scanner and scanned that. I like, had some like wicked textures. Um, it's so Boston. Like, I had some wicked cool textures that I used in it. Um, so wicked yeah. Wicked awesome, eh? Yeah, yeah, wicked awesome. Um, so <laughs> you can find them anywhere. Um, Justin Roy had asked, do you use Adobe Capture? I have it on my phone and I forget that I have it on my phone to actually use it. And I should, so I know with Adobe Capture, if I'm correct, um, if I'm correct, I believe that is actually made for like grabbing something and being able to turn it into like a vector right there. Is that right? Because I haven't used it that often. I, I think that's what Capture is for. Um, people using it. I've never used it. Mackie says, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. So, which is fine and awesome, but like lately, and, and I think, and we're going to talk about sort of texture myths. I think there definitely, of course, is still, um, a lot of, of great stuff with vector textures, but I'm, I'm kind of on a, this hell bent bitmap texture thing for computer performance and for what I do. So that's probably the reason that I haven't used it as much lately. Cause I've kind of been in a, in a bitmap texture thing, um, both with the pack we've released and, and stuff we're going to do, uh, tonight. Um, so another thing to think of with textures, right. Is actually using, you know, pencils, pens, brush pens, because textures aren't just to overlay on your whole image, right? We can use like in, in the pack, we, I have a lot of things called edge textures. Um, you know, which is literally, you know, just taking like, you know, this is just a grease pencil, right? And just, you know, drawing, you know, lines. Here's the, this is a Tom Brow, Tom Bow brush pen, you know, where you can just kind of, mm -hmm. right? You know, because we're just going to make lines and, and kind of scan these in and use them as, as images later. Um, you know, there's, because one of the things that I like using, um, lined textures for over vector brushes lately is and and there's awesome vector brushes i use you know vector hero a lot vector sketch um but you know even with making brushes like there's a certain point where you have to set your brush to have like a stretch point so you can have like all this cool stuff on like one end and all this cool stuff on the other end but there's a certain point where in the middle of that brush i'm going to move my camera back to me so i can right there's a certain point in the middle of that brush that you've got to have this thing so it can stretch across the line that you know that you're trying to make um which you know is fine but like i want to sometimes have my whole line have you know my whole line have very random parts and not have it be sort of random part stretched vector line and you know then random part um so that's why i've kind of been into these um bitmap line textures uh as well I just added a link to Tombow um, pens on Amazon. I don't know if it's an affiliate link or not. If it is, good for me, but I wasn't trying to make affiliate income yeah. off, of, off of them, um, but they're pretty cool. Um, as far as the vector textures, yeah, so I, like KW had said, I've never used vector textures. Are they any good? I've always used 600 DPI. I made some vector texture packs. They work fine in, in the sense of like making them for you know printing or whatnot. The problem is, is that if you use them a lot, they just will like slow down or like sometimes crash Illustrator. So it depends if you have yeah. a new computer and you really are a purist or a purist for vector textures. Um, that's a problem. But Lenny was showing me, and we'll, we'll show you more in, in just a few minutes, that it's so much lighter that if you're cool with it, you know, you don't even notice. I mean, I got my shirts printed from him. You can't tell. And, it, and it's so much lighter. You don't worry about the computer crashing. Um, Again, like if you just, uh, the link to the, like on the authentic screen printers one, you can just look at preview images, you can see them, or you can even go to, I don't think you can see it on the t-shirt image that I have, but you can see they look, it's indistinguishable. It's just so high resolution that you're not going to see any weird pixelation or anything like that. Exactly. And, and you're like, and you really hit it. And you know, some of this we'll, we'll talk about, I think when we get into sort of the myths part of this. But if you took, right, and this is, uh, you know, certainly no, no slam against retro supply products, but you know, if you took four of your all over vector textures and stacked them in the same document, you are not scaling in and out and using that document efficiently after that. That's just the nature of Illustrator. It has nothing to do with your textures and how you made them. It's the nature of Illustrator. There's 
sometimes hundreds of thousands of points in those things to get all that little detail. Um, you know, when we're using bitmap textures and specifically like high DPI one bit bitmap textures, man, I've stacked five, six, and seven on top and all my files zoom in and out, scale, move, do things, do everything you want to do. You get all the great grit and grime of a bitmap texture. You get all the performance of a bitmap texture, but you can still get the scalability of vector textures, you know, with it. And a lot of people don't realize that, I think. Yeah, for sure. And I will say, though, I feel like I got to share this with people. Um, what's that one from Astute Graphics that they sent me a trial version of it that like just like will get rid of so many points? Um, oh, oh, absolutely. Vector first aid. Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here, let me send you guys a link to this. Man, they should really let like you have affiliate links for this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So one of the, like the guys that works at Astute Graphics sent this to me. And I saw Vaughn using it too. And this is crazy, you guys. Check this out. Um, here's a link to it. So I saw, and I might be fudging the numbers just a little bit, but it's, it was approximately something like this. Um, oh, Alan, I think Alan Wu gra just grabbed the authentic screen printers toolkit. Thank, Thank you so you. much. When you do, um, you're getting oh, awesome product and you're, you. th you're throwing some cash in our little guitar case when you do. Um, Literal yes. guitar case. We both play. Yeah, we do. So yeah, thanks for grabbing that. You'll, you'll love it. Um, Astute does have an affiliate program, but I'm, I know them pretty well. I, I've tried hard. They are pretty slow on getting you an affiliate thing. Uh, they make great products. They're horrible at following up on affiliates. But anyways, this vector first aid thing, you can put a vector thing in there. I think like um, Vaughn did and it had something like, I swear it had like a hundred thousand points. I know that sounds yeah. crazy, but I think it did. And then like, he ran it through one time and it went down to something like 30,000 and he ran it through again. And it was like down to, I don't even know, like 8,000. He got it down to like 6,000 points or something and you could not tell the difference between the two. Yeah, it, it was insane. So, I mean, if you love vector textures, try out vector first aid, like it will clean them up for you. I mean, even so 6,000 points is a lot. Um, just don't think it's the best way to do it for textures, but yeah, it will do it. And you don't know it. It doesn't make it all, j you know, jiggy jaggy. Right. Uh, Seth asked, is it free service? No, it's, um, you think you get a free trial. It's pretty expensive, but it will, I mean, you'll find a product. If you don't have vector scribe, you should at least grab vector scribe from them. Um, yeah. Okay. And so they're good. And ultimately they're just good people too. Like it's just good to support them. They are like, they're, they're these super cool guys from the UK and they just, it's so funny, man. They're like, it's like, they're like, the team is like seven to 10 people and they just run circles around um, the Adobe team in terms of making stuff for Illustrator. It's really, it's actually kind of embarrassing for the people at Illustrator. Um, I agree a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, even when they try to emulate them, they can't quite do it right. But any, anyways, I'm not, not here to dog on, a, on Adobe, although they're gi the gigantic corporate man, so whatever. Um, <laughs> okay, so we, we just went through 10 minutes. I'm trying to stay on schedule for everybody. So that was the creating textures part. Um, do you feel like you got all the information across, Lenny, or do you need a minute or two more? Or are we ready to move on to digitizing the textures? No, I think well, I'm going to just show one more kind of cool thing. Um, I'm going to go down here, right? So this was the piece of paper that I used as my palette, right? You know, to just initially put the ink on to pull it up to make those textures that we were looking at. So when I'm all done, I'll take the palette and turn it over on another sheet of paper. And I'll take a brayer just that we like we use for block printing. And just rub it on and peel it off. Right. Mm -hmm. And then so like literally what you use to make the texture you can sit there and move around. There you go. Ooh, this one's a really cool texture. It's almost like a, like a cool wood grain. I'll show you guys in a second. Right, I'm just literally moving the piece of paper around that was my palette. This is essentially like the most rudimentary version of um, printing possible. Right, like look, mm, look at that. Look at the lines in that. Yep. This right? was... And so, Fun fact about this, um, I don't know if you know, um, Andy, Andy Warhol used to do a similar thing where he would get tracing paper and then tape it to a piece of regular paper or something equivalent of that. One that was absorbent, one that wasn't, tape them together, put the ink onto the non-absorbent paper and then 
paint on it and then he would flip it on to the absorbent paper and push it down and make prints. Yep. And then color them in. So yeah, kind of interesting. Oh, look at that. This one actually my paper stuck and tore. So like literally I just had a piece of paper tear off making the texture. Whoa, dude, you just made the cover of the, that Coldplay album. <laughs> That's right. There we go. That's how they did it, by the way. <laughs> Not that they I sat there to Coldplay. They sat there at a kitchen table, right? And now here's that piece of palette, you know, the paper that I used for the palette, right? You can see where the paper tore away. Darn right, I'm going to scan that in and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll use that um, as well. Yep. Um... So, yes. So, in short, pens, brush pens, brushes, sponges, but even at home, if you don't want to go buy that stuff, uh, you know, uh, old t-shirts, bundle them up and smack them around and paint and paper towels and um, gosh, what else? Ink, ink pads, you know, that you use for, um, you know, stamping, you know, you know, rubber stamps, take the actual ink pad and press it down on the paper. Get all sorts of cool texture that way as well. Yeah, okay. Totally. Now we can move on. Okay. So now we are moving on to the Hey Monkey Guide to digitizing your textures. So this is obviously, uh, you are not going to use the wet textures, I hope. Um, yeah. I actually will use the wet textures because for tonight, I'm going to talk about using a scanner, but lately I have done nothing but use my iPhone to get the textures in digitally. Um, I find it faster. I can use the, uh, I can use it wet. Like I literally just made these so I can use them. We don't have to sit there and wait for them to dry. Um, so what I will do, so we're going to kind of just talk about an iPhone method first. And that is as simple as we don't have to worry about great lighting, just taking my phone and I'm literally just taking a, I just have the texture sitting on my desk and I'm going to get ready to uh, share a screen in a little bit too, to show you some stuff. Right, and I'm just taking, like literally just, you know, picture of it on my phone, right? Do, 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 do. And I am going to just whatever your favorite method of getting a picture from your phone to your computer is, um, you can, you know, Dropbox it. A lot of times I will literally just text myself the photo because that way, um, I have iMessage on my computer as well, so I can easily grab the texture. So there we go. I just, so I just sent that one that we made, the one that I really liked with the cool sort of, you know, wooden texture, um, over to my phone or to my messages. And now I am going to, Dustin, how do I share a screen? You should be able to click on share. And then it should pop up with like a bunch of options of different. Oh, okay. So desktop yeah. one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me, hold on just a second. Oops. I'm going to stop the share for a second just to. And hey, if, if, um, if you guys, if anyone does grab, well, we've already had a couple people grab it, but if you grab oh, hey, thank you. the Authentic Screen Printers Toolkit while you're on the call, not only will you get that, but I'm going to give away three shirts printed by Lenny himself, who we're talking with right now. And um, let me ch show you this shirt so you can check it out. I will send you three lucky winners that will randomly be selected those um, if you grab while you're on the call. Essentially, it is everything we're teaching you now, nearly 100 textures plus 10 guides, um, mock-ups for t-shirts, mock-ups for uh, flat stock, vector um, graphics that you can use in your work, and more, much more you can see in the link. Um, you can grab it now. Um, we, we appreciate it. It helps to support these kind of webinars and you have a chance to win a t-shirt. Win-win. Okay, sorry. Winning is cool. Um, all right, so I'm sharing my screen now. Um, I can't see the chat, so I'm assuming, Dustin, you can see my screen. Everyone can see my screen. Yep, I can see it. Everybody else see okay, it? Okay, cool. What? I'm just, I was just making sure everyone else could see it. Yep, they can okay, see it. Okay, cool. Um, so, like, literally, you can tell, like, 
I mean, I didn't sit there and place this on a scanner, which I could, and, and we'll talk about that. The only reason I didn't do that tonight is just the matter of like, I have my webcam hooked up, I have a microphone hooked up. Um, so I'll talk through scanner settings because they're very basic, but this is sort of my quick and dirty way and it works just as well. I haven't seen for me personally, the way I use textures, any real benefit to using the scanner, except a lot of times it takes longer. Um, you know, to do it. So that's just, again, a personal thing. You're not wrong if you do it that way. Um, so I just have this picture that I just kind of took real quick and, and janky in the, in the phone. And I'm just gonna just crop it up a little bit, right? We're just gonna make sure that we have edges on everything. Boom. Okay. So, right. So the magic in uh, textures uh, comes from using primarily for me levels in Photoshop. Uh, so first thing I do is I make my background layer editable um, just by double clicking on it and it turns it into an editable layer. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is um, use an adjustment layer. So right down here, right, we have our adjustment layers and then uh, levels, right? And what we want to do is just try to push this as much as we can black and white, right? We want that perfect contrast of sort of, of black and white, right? So we're just kind of getting that funky yellow thing down there. But for right now, we're not worried about any of that yellow. But see how I've just sort of pushed things to the extreme? Mm -hmm. And if I drag that down, the, the, the light slider, right? I can make things darker. What you're seeing there is some of the uh, shadows from the camera picture, you know, that I took, which sometimes I, I will actually leave in there. You can actually make a cool part of the texture there. Um, but by pulling out the mids and stuff like that, we can play with that. As I pull up that and then we pull that up. So really it's just playing with the levels and getting them to somewhere where you like it. I'm saying, okay, I like, you know, Lenny, I like that. good question for you here from Dave. He said, why don't you make it grayscale first? So we're going to eventually, um, you can, I just don't, <laughs> there's no, uh, the, the order, the order in that is, is, is fine. Um, <laughs> cause yeah, I'm getting ready to, usually I just do that at the, at the, um, and it actually, the grayscale, can I actually have layers in the thing? I don't remember. Anyway, so I say don't merge. Right, so I just did turn it to grayscale now. And then I'll turn it to, um, oh yeah. Then you have to flatten it. And just for everyone that's watching, this will be recorded, there'll be a record of this. So if you're watching this now thinking, oh no, I'm going to like not remember this tomorrow. There will be a record for you to refer back to. So don't worry about taking screenshots or you know freaking out that you'll forget it. You can follow through this part, stop it, start it as you go. So no worries, yep. guys. So once you have got your texture where you've liked it using the levels and you've converted to grayscale, which again, that step is wherever you want to do it. Um, once you've flattened the, uh, the image or merged the layer down, then it gives you the ability to convert it to bitmap, okay? So say flatten layers, yes, my layers are already flattened. So now here is where you've kind of can now actually start taking this one texture and turning it into two. So we could use a half, a half tone screen method, right? Which will actually turn this into half tone dots. Um, lately I've kind of been against using half tone textures just because I feel like it's become a little passe or kind of cliche. Um, so you can, I will use 50% thresholds, okay? So under the method there's half tone screen, 50% threshold. And so it retains all the scrapiness. And I'm zoomed in like thousands of percents there. But that way you keep all that, that nice scrapiness, but you don't have like the halftone dot stuff with it. Mm, okay. And what was that setting called again? 50% uh, threshold. Okay, cool. Real quick, thank you to uh, John. And Heather, thank you so much. They, I saw they grabbed the Authentic Script Printers Toolkit. Thanks so much for uh, supporting it. And uh, I have you entered for the t-shirt as well. Thank you. I just gave thumbs up to the camera realizing I'm sharing my screen and nobody saw it. 
Yep. Enjoy. Right. So boom, we, we've created a, you know, turn it into a bitmap and then we are just going to uh, save it. And I'm just going to do it as a PNG file. We'll just say, name it whatever you want. And Zero why a PNG file? Authentic screen printers toolkit. Like I broke them out into the, the medium that I used to make it. And then I also made light, medium, and dark versions. And I can show a little bit of how I did that as well. Um, boom. I tend to keep large file size because they're honestly not that large. This may, might be a meg, maybe that big, if that. Um, which we also know that if this was, if we were going to uh, vector trace this in Illustrator, that would quickly become much larger than a meg. Um, right. Right. And saving that. So now what I can do, like I've done that, I can actually like hit undo a few times until I get back to where, you know, my layers weren't uh, flattened. So see, I've got both my layers again. So now I can click on the levels again. Um, right. any question, good, really good question for you. I actually don't know the answer to this either. I'm very curious. Why PNG? Why not TIFF? Uh, file size. I, there no drawbacks. I'm not nothing that would cause any drawback or reason. Smaller not. with PNGs. Not for me. It hasn't yet. Um, I just find the performance is just as good. It looks just as good printed. Uh, file size is is less. Oh yeah, and PNG can be saved as transparent. And I, I, I can totally vouch for this. I watched as Lenny was making the, the recent batch of shirts for me, for me um, the skull ones that I sent a link earlier in this. And you, you just can't tell, even when like you enlarge them a huge amount, you can't tell the difference. So, I mean, light, lighter right. size, no problems with it, why not, you know? Although like tips are perfect, I use tips all the time, perfectly fine to use those as well. But yeah, PNGs are lighter. So right, so here I am literally just with, with the levels here. I've sort of made a, a much lighter version, right, of that texture. Yep. Take it back to bitmap, flatten the layers, 50% threshold. So just did it, and so now it's not nearly as dark as the other one. File save as. So now I'll just say like texture one, uh, light, hold on, a little. Okay. And big thanks to Brent. Brent just grabbed the Authentic Screen Printers Toolkit. Thanks, Brent. I think Thank you're going to love it. I can use this financial windfall to buy more sponges and brushes and things. <laughs> so now I'm just saving it again, right? And I can keep doing that with, um, you know, with varying degrees of, of darkness. So I can undo it again, get back to my adjustment layers. Right, and again, just kind of playing around with it. And this is me doing it a bit quicker with, with the camera. If you use the scanner, you won't have some of those shadowing issues that we're seeing at the bottom. But again, sometimes I don't mind just leaving them there. Bitmap, flatten layers. Yes, right, so then there again, there's a completely you know, different intensity from the original you know, one we did. Yep. So you, you're essentially, out, just by adjusting the sliders off of one texture, you can, I mean, I guess you could technically subdivide it as many times as you want. You could get two, three, four, 10, 20 different yeah, textures, totally depending could. on how you tweak that. Totally good. Um, let me grab like kind of a, a totally different one just for, let's see what we got over here. And these are actually already dry, so I could, here's one. So we're gonna use um, one that's very dark and I'm gonna use my phone again real quick. If you all wanna ask questions sort of while I'm, while I'm scanning, go for it. There we go. Boom. So again, I'm just taking them with my phone and I am texting them to myself, which is sort of a, it's kind of a nice uh, instant gratification, you know, instead of like pulling out the scanner, throwing it on the bed, 
running it through the scanner, saving it to your thing, going to Photoshop and opening it. Within a minute, I've got it like in Photoshop and I'm processing it. Um, and to me, right, it's a texture, it's grimy, it's dirty. Like, I, I don't know, I'm just, this is just me. I kind of don't care if I capture it kind of crappy and dirty and, and whatever. Um, for the authentic screen, screen printer's toolkit, half of them were probably scanned, scanned, and then there was probably half of them that I just did with my phone. Um, just as I was looking at it, I was like, oh, this is cool, I just want to try it, and it, and it worked, and it was fine. And, um, and so, right, so here it is, I just texted it to myself. And so, so you, I wanted to add on to that real quick. So, so you guys know, so for the packs that like I, I've made, like I bought this expensive fancy scanner down in Portland. Like, yeah, I think it goes up to like 24,000 or 30,000 DPI. It's crazy. Um, and I, I do everything in there because I don't want to get any like, you know, I just feel like, you know, since I run a business that does this, I always like do it that way. But it's true. Like I see people do this with, I mean, cameras these days on phones are like better than like cameras. Yeah. For what five years ago that you would buy it's crazy oh and you know i also did forget um i apologize earlier when i do take it with the phone if i get some of the shadowing i will um sometimes i'll use brightness and contrast to get rid of some of the you know some of that shadowing and stuff in there cool and just so you know we got two minutes left in this part um because it is 6 48 i want to make sure in that their time period that some people have they can get they can see the whole awesome picture. so let me what i'll do then is just to show one more time right levels so Je jeff had asked um how are you moving the texted picture to your computer i usually email it to myself is that what you did or did you do an airdrop i text i personally texted it to myself i'm on a on the mac so my iMessage is connected to my phone and everything emailing it exactly the same way um, okay you know yeah just whatever way you want to get to um and what what i do i always do this is i just like right click on um right click on my computer going to the phone or on the phone there's always a way to get to a um airdrop and then i just airdrop it onto my computer um airdrop if, too yeah totally Lots, you know mac, what i so actually easy. forget about airdrop if you have an iphone and a mac use airdrop i always forget about that Fun little uh -huh. fact about that too is if you use Procreate, um, AirDrop will let you AirDrop the brushes in and you don't have to drop them in individually. You can like literally drop 20 brushes right. in and they'll all be in a folder at the same time, which, you know, surprise a lot of people don't know and it's so annoying to individually download brushes. Yes. All right, so texture O2. And by the way, when we get to the part of applying these to stuff, um, I'll see if I can grab one of the textures from the pack and like make it available to you guys. So if you want, you can download it and try it out on an image. That way you can see in real time or after this is done, um, just how good this looks. Cause to me, the real mind blowing part of this is when you see this applied in say illustrator to add textures. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the best part. There we go. I forgot to actually convert it to a bitmap. That's the timer. There's the timer. Um, okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, answer. So I'm, I'm probably butchering this, but Serafin Lopez had said, is there a certain brand of scanner printers that you both would recommend? I have an, hold on a second. I'll literally look at this right now. Uh, I, I've always liked Epson personally. Yep, I have an Epson Perfection V600. And yep. I mean, I could literally, like, I literally with my kids use it as a microscope. I can bring a leaf in from outside and, like, scan something at 30,000 DPI. Right. And um, I, it's just crazy. So I love it. It cost me a couple, I don't know, two or $300 for it. Um, but you don't even need that. I mean, even a printer scanner is good for, um, you know, making your own at home. You don't need to go get fancy stuff to do it. I just do this for a living. Totally. So I'm crazy with it. Like I said, even a phone. So we'll get ready to jump to the next section, but like here's this texture right here. This is the exact same texture that we just scanned, like just used on the other one. All I did was take the level sliders and just jack them around a little bit and it blew out the whole middle and kept this cool kind of scrape on the top and the bottom. Um, but this is still the exact same image we just did a minute ago. 
So we'll do that. And like there's the old one there. And let me Photoshop and boom. And let me, I will stop sharing for a moment just to, there we go. Oh, and I want to say thank you to, thanks to Cindy, Amy, Kelly, Brendan, Brent. Thank you all you guys for grabbing um, the pack. Again, um, buying it is kind of like, um, not only is it a fantastic pack, it truly is. Lenny literally kind of spilled his entire brain into this pack. Um, that sounds gross, but the truth is he really did put everything he knows about screen printing. He's done this for a living for years. He's, aren't you the president of AIGA? In, um, I'm of AIGA Raleigh, yeah, currently, yeah, yep. President of AIGA Raleigh, I mean, he's spilled all of his mind into making this. So you can do mock-ups. We've even joked you could essentially start a division of your own freelance business where you are doing t-shirt printing or flat stock printing with all of the stuff that's in this pack. Um, so grab it if it sounds enticing to you. When you grab it when you're in the, on the call with us, we're going to um, put you in a drawing for a retro supply t-shirt. Plus you're just getting an awesome thing. And you're also like directly Pavlovian dog style letting me know that when we do webinars, um, it's helping sales, which means that I should do more webinars. And then that means that, um, we can do more of these and, 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 and teach and stuff. So that's cool. So thanks to everybody. Yes. Um, okay. Lenny, are you ready to move on to applying the textures to your work? So let me, I'm going to just, uh, I know the camera's still on me, but I'm just going to get an, something opened up in illustrator. Let's see here. Wait until you guys see this. So this was the part when me and Lenny, like me and Lenny chat a lot. We've been friends for years. Um, he first got me to go to Creative South, um, got me a gig doing a workshop there, and we've been friends ever since. But um, so lots of times we'll get on calls and we'll just show me stuff. And he was just showing me how to use these in Illustrator, and it's pretty cool. So looking forward to you guys having a chance to see this right now. It's just, that's how the product came about. I think I was just working on something and you saw it and you were like, wait, stop. What did you just do? <laughs> that's exactly how it happened. You and did then, that and, and I was like, like products. <laughs> Yeah, dude, let's make a product now. And you know what, 40 days later, if that, we had it completely done. Um, let me just... Uh, me well, because you know, like when you see it, like sometimes you'll see it on something on TV. Sometimes it's walking through your Walgreens. Sometimes it's at the store, some new food. It's like you see something, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know about this. I've been doing this for years. How many other people don't know about this? It's so convenient. Um, but yeah, it's just really cool. Right, so, totally, absolutely. So let's get ready to talk about usage. I'm seeing if I can get um, one of the textures from the pack that I can give people to download for you so they can try this out right now if they want with us. Oh yeah, I can, um, can I, you want me to actually upload one of the ones I just made? Yeah, sure, yeah, if you can, if you can give them a link that they can access for sure. Uh, um, yep. Or if you can't, just let me know and I'm happy to do it. I can do that actually. Yeah. Let me, um, let me, I, I have them on my desktop. Let me just real quick. I will, um, I'll copy one of them over to my, uh, there we go. Texture one light, texture one. Let's see, I'll copy them over to my Dropbox and post a Dropbox link. Josh said, I'm going to get crazy with the torch and use this technique. Be super so careful, cool. but if you do, please like tag us in a story on Instagram. Copy Dropbox link. Let's see here. Uh, where's Zoom? So let me know if you guys can. Are those links they're showing up there in the chat? Uh, yes. Okay. For me, it is at least. These are literally uh, two of the scans that I, I just did. So if you guys want to grab those. Um, Awesome. All right, let me switch back to sharing my screen. And if you love those, sorry, I have to be the ShamWow dude. I've got to pay for the lights. And if you love those free textures, grab the authentic screen printer, screen printing toolkit and be entered to win a free retro supply t-shirt. ShamWow. All right, so he just pulled up, this is the, the cover graphic for, for the product. Subtle plug. <laughs> um, right, so this is um, pr pretty much untextured. This is just sort of how it, how it is just, just sitting there. Um, so right, so I'm gonna just do file and place 
or you can just drag it into Illustrator. And I'm going to go to my, um, I'll go over to Dropbox where I just posted the exact ones that I sent you. I'm grabbing the texture that I scanned the light version and I'm just placing it and I'm just clicking it in. So I think you could kind of see like, you know, the black and white version of it sitting up there in the corner, right? It's not very big, which is fine. That's another reason that we can keep the file sizes on these small because these, again, they're textures. They're supposed to be gritty and grimy. There's no reason to scan a texture and make a version of it that's 16 by 20 or 18 by 24. We can make, I scan all my textures and use all my textures at like eight by 10, eight and a half by 11, and then bring them in. And then I'll scale them up from there. And they just have always looked great. And that's how, another way that our performance uh, will work really well, right? Because we can bring it in and then just scale it up. And it's because it's a one-bit texture, right? So all I'm doing is just scaling it. And the other great thing too, right? Texture myth. And I know we're going to talk about that later. Don't worry about scaling it proportionately. That's, a, that's one of the excuses for using, right? Like vector textures and stuff is... Make sure you scale proportionally. Why? It's a texture. Just squish and squash and stretch and, and move, and it's probably still going to like look fine, right? So all I did was grab that, that light version of that texture. Here it is right here. You can see it in, in black. Now you'll notice, right, There's none. Of the, the white background's not there, yeah. right? And I should the note, this is only 277 kilobytes. It's super yeah. small. This is not going to crash. The white background cool. isn't there because when we're doing a – 50% threshold, one bit bitmap saved as a PNG, and honestly a TIFF as well because it does have transparency in it, but your PNG is going to be a smaller file size. It automatically, Illustrator reads that background as not being there. So without doing anything, having to do any sort of masks or quick selections, because I think I saw that in the chat, our background is already knocked out and we've got, you know, we don't have any degradation of the texture, you know, in there, right? But then with the texture selected, all we have to do is grab our eyedropper tool select a color and Illustrator colors the pure black parts of the texture. Just so do like you that. see now how that texture just got colored and now it looks like it's all kind of scraped away to the background color. And that's essentially good to print. Like you're, you're good to go pretty much. Oh, it's 100% good to print, yeah. Now when I'm actually screen printing and um, if we have time, I might be able to show how to set up the file for screen printing using them. So this is how I would do it if I'm exporting, you know, a web graphic for you to put like on the retro supply site. If I was doing it for screen, uh, for screen printing, then I would do a, a different process for it. But not in the scanning and everything, just literally in the coloring, like everything is the same pulling it into Illustrator. Dude, people, I'm so glad everyone else is loving this as much as I did when I saw it. Like Kelly's like, yes. <laughs> Uh, Aaron is like, so, uh, well, she said, so we're putting on top layer and making it the same color as the background layer. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Yep. Brent's like, well, so just to show you the difference, right? Like, I, so here I am. I just colored it red so you could see the change, you know, in the texture. You know, here's blue here. So, like, you literally can make it whatever color you want to make it. But generally, we would use our background color so it looks like the, you know, the, the graphic is etched or scraped or worn away from the background. And so here's the beautiful thing, right? So here's this, this texture sitting in there. And I'm actually going to just go ahead and like, you know, I'll just kind of put it there. And now I'm going to place another one. Right? And, you know, this may, boom, boom. And I'm just going to let that one kind of go up there. And I selected my eyedropper. And now I'm coloring it. So now I've got two textures in there, right? If those were vector good night, like the webinar is over. My computer wouldn't be able to handle the stream and Illustrator, but, you know, literally, I'm zooming and moving. And my computer, I mean, it's not really that brand new. It's not like a newest MacBook Pro. It, you know, it'll, it'll drag here and there. But so far, I have two, you know, huge textures. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and place, we're just going to absolutely destroy this thing right so let's do i want to this. say real Here quick, we go, uh, right? sorry to interrupt real quick thanks to yeah, uh ahead. kelly ronald butch david matt um thanks all you guys for grabbing the pack um i think once people see like the result they're like oh okay i'm grabbing this right so, so now here's the third one so look how like this literally looks like it's on the side of a wall in detroit from like 1955 right 
just stack them out here. But again, look, look at my performance is still, I mean, that's bouncy, man. That ain't going to happen in a vector. I don't have to like view it as an outline or a preview to be able to sort of move stuff around and do stuff. Yep. And generally what I will do is, um, let me move this to the side is, um, I'll make a layer in my layers palette where I sort of put the textures, you know, so they're kind of on top. And then that way, if I need to get back in and edit, edit my artwork, I can just turn it on and off, you know, to edit it. Um, and then Andy remember, asked, you can go ahead. Uh, Andy was asking, um, is the key to the eyedropper changing the color due to it being a bitmap file? Yeah, I've always yeah, wondered. So, um, it's not so much a bitmap file, but a grayscale like a grayscale in a format that can support transparency. Illustrator recognizes that the background's transparent, so we don't have to worry about dealing with, you know, white removal. Um, and it recognizes that the black as something that it can color, you know, the black in the image as something it can color. So whether it's a, um, if we actually pulled it in as a bitmap, it should work, but I've only done it as PNGs and TIFFs, and I just like the performance in a PNG. Um, it works for me. Um, and it looks great. I mean, again, look at this. This is just, this looks scraped, right? Yeah, so, someone was saying that they got that texture and they saw a little bit of see-through and I was saying it might have been because you really quickly did it on the fly and it wasn't pure black. Um, but... No, no, it should be pure black. That's weird. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It's hard, I can't remember who asked that, but whoever it was, it's hard to tell without seeing what you say on your computer, but if that would happen if it wasn't pure black. Um, Correct. And this image, like, so, you know, pixel wise, it is what it is. But let me, if I was to. Aaron has such a good comment. She's like, I can't believe it's, or it might be a he or she. I'm sorry, I don't know. It says, I can't believe it's as simple. I have a bunch of monster files from years past that I see now. We're so over that. Well, and, you know, and the same thing with me. And, and I know actually in doing this pack, Dustin and I even talked about possibly going back to some of Retro Supply's old vector textures and you know we could actually sort of update them for the modern age because they're great textures i used to use them all i used to use the so many of the original you know textures that you that you made um it's still good textures so we can literally you can reverse it right if we have if you have all your old vector textures save them as a bitmap format pull them to photos like you just got to take it backwards start an illustrator take it to photoshop and then bring it back in and you can still have all your great vector textures you use at a fraction of the, you know, processor intensiveness that it used to take. Um, so this is actually, if this was printed, this would be almost like 16 by 20 or 18 by 24 um, on a print size. And again, you know, that looks fantastic. And huge thanks to uh, Matt, Jordy, Al Al Aline, sorry if I got that wrong, um, and Nicholas for grabbing the pack. Thanks, you guys. Um, you so know what I also, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was say, what see. I also wanted to show real quick is these are the, the full page uh, textures, but in the pack, um, right, you remember I made a, a, a page with these, um, with the lines on it. I, I can't hold it up right now because I only have the one camera. Remember I did it with the grease pencil and the brush pen and stuff. That's exactly what I, I was just going to ask you to mention. Yep. So edge texture. So what I'm going to do is I'll just use some from the pack since they're sort of already ready to go. But I process those exactly the same way. I just pull them into Photoshop and do exactly the same thing. Levels, convert to grayscale, convert to bitmap, so on and so forth. And so what I have is I'm going to go ahead and place... And Hey Monkey and Puzzle Projects, Retro Supply, Authentic Screen Printers Toolkit. And so for those of you who haven't bought, and even those who, who have, when you look in the toolkit, right, I have full page textures, edge textures, stamp brushes. So I do have a small, small set of vector brushes that are included, just if you want to kind of pop in something real quick to kind of degrade it a little bit. But here's edge textures, like Edge 01, 02, 03, and I'm just going to open up 01 and I'm gonna place it. And so you can see, I'm gonna zoom in, right? It's a nice gritty like ink splatter, you know, pen. It's one know, of my edge, favorite right? Yeah. yeah, I love this one, right? So if we go down and we take this texture, 
right? And I kind of just pull it, you know, right on the top of that, you know, the, the black part we have there on the bar. So two things, if I want, I literally could just do that, right? Because it happens to be black, so it works and it looks good. Yeah, it does. But if I want it to kind of chunk into it, I'm just going to make it the background color. And now it looks like it's just got a nice uneven. And if you, right, you could even do stuff where like if I kind of scale it down a little bit, some, some of the top starts to peek back through again. Mary's like, stop, this is too much. <laughs> right, but it's so simple. Like, I know. So, so, and it, and it's it is for me too. No, it's like when you know your mind is blown. So like now you get this where you get some of the ink worn away and you get some of the ink at the top and we could stack up one here and you know what, I'm just gonna literally, I'm just cutting and pasting it and I just do one at the bottom. And again, how fast that was. If that was a brush with all those points, we might, maybe not as much a performance issue as a full page texture, but if we start stacking them up, you know, totally. Um, and remember, these are like, um, though I think the way I described it in the email is the subject line was squishy. These are, you, you can crunch them a little, not a little bit, a lot. They're, they're textured. Yeah, like so they're, I, I they're just these. random stuff. You can squish them. You can stretch them. You can make them bigger or smaller. If you're not going too crazy, I mean, if you made them super, super big, you're going to start to see, obviously, um, some like bitmap yep. squares and stuff, but you can do so much. And because like screens are, I don't know, like what, how dense are your screens that you use? Uh, for like screen printing? Yeah, like for sure. Yeah, so I use, for those of you who are into screen printing, um, I'll use anywhere from a 110 to a, a 230 and even a 305. So if I had super, super, super fine detail, I could use a higher mesh screen, the detail would hold. But honestly, like Dustin, you know, the Retro Supply Sculpture, I mean, that was done on a 156 mesh yep. screen. So it's 156 holes per inch. All that texture came out fine. Um, it just goes, you know what I love about this, I think, is here. is that it kind of yep. democratizes, is that the word, democratizes this? It, so I think before you had shared this with me and shared that, like, man, you were like, I squish some of these things and stretch them and I don't use, you know, crazy high DPI numbers and stuff like that or like screen mesh counts. When you realize that, you just realize, man, like sometimes people, I don't think they intentionally do most of the time, but sometimes they, they make it seem more intimidating than it has to be. You can grab that pack or make your own textures and do this. And it's surprisingly hard to screw up if, if, if you, you know, if, if like most of you, you know, you're an experienced graphic designer, you know, like you can do so much stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm a famous, um, I'm a famous overthinker. Um, there we go. Let me go kind of get it back to the, uh, to the uh, camera there. I can switch back again. But, and that's the other thing. So with, within Illustrator 2, you can pull in a full page texture and then you can take a vector shape and use it as a clipping mask for that texture. So if you just want the texture to influence just a certain part of shape. And again, you could load up a bunch of those. And again, your file performance is going to be so much better. So much better. So yeah, I know our totally. timer went off. What was, what was our step three? What were we going to? Well, we did step three. Step minutes. three was applying it. So we've covered okay. all the main steps. So if, it, if it's late where you are and you need to go to, to bed, um, gra you could, you could um, of course, leave right the second if, if you had to. Um, but don't forget to grab the authentic screen, printer, screen printer's toolkit before you go. Be entered for the T-shirt. The um, I'm going to give three of them away. This has... Um, almost a hundred textures from the pack made by Lenny. These are ones that have been tested. Literally parts of this pack were used to make the t-shirt that I'm giving away, the three t-shirts I'm giving away. It has 15 lightweight edge textures, like the ones he just showed you. Um, nine gritty vector stamp brushes. So if you want to add a little vector, vector in there with the stamp, you can do it. Um, it has Hey Monkey design illustration packs. Um, it has shirt and poster templates. It has mm -hmm. flat stock and textile. Actually, let me just show you guys real quick. I'm going to share my, share my screen here um, so you guys can see. And then we'll talk about myths and then go into Q&A. We can probably mix it. Yeah, cool. We have like 18 questions. And then we're going to wrap it up. So we'll probably go for maybe another 20 minutes. Um, cool. Let me share my screen here. Uh, da, 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 da. You guys are going to judge me based on all these windows I have open. Okay. <laughs> I think we all secretly judge people on that. Um, so like if you look at the pack here, um, 
yeah, so you can see here it has 63 lightweight full page textures. Um, these were used on my, my shirts that, that Lenny made for me. Um, they look fantastic. Um, totally authentic with the textures. 15 lightweight edge textures, uh, nine gritty vector stamp brushes, uh, Hey Monkey Design illustration pack. So if you like all these cool graphics you're seeing on the page, you will have access to those and you can play with those. Uh, do whatever. Use them for whatever you want. Yeah, use it for whatever you want other than don't pretend to be Hey Monkey. <laughs> um, this works. Nobody for would want to pretend to be that anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, print ready shirt and poster templates. So like, here, I'll show you, like, this is pretty cool. Okay, so you can get like a close up and see, here's like the textures in use on something. Here's some more of the textures in use. And here's how he made like three versions of each. So, you know, maybe you just want to destroy it. You can go with heavy, but most of the time you might want something kind of light, fairly subtle. You can go with this light, one of the light versions. Um, I should make this bigger. Um, here's Lenny in the studio. This is a proof that Lenny truly does own a studio yeah. and does this stuff all day long. Um, here's a before and after, so you can kind of see the results you're getting. This is all with these lightweight textures. It's crazy. Um, another close up. These are some of the assets that you get if you you know want to use these to make your own shirts or print out some posters. You can use these, add textures. I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, and here's another example of you know lightweight, different versions. And even the even the the heavy right was only three meg. I mean that's nothing nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I, we we've used these on a bunch of things. Never ever had a problem with it. Um, we've got ten reviews of it. They're all I believe five stars or like. I mean yeah, they're, it's all great reviews. Um, and then look at this is the crazy part. I didn't ask Lenny to do this, but Lenny is just I don't know if it's OCD or if it's yes. he just loves sharing. Um, yes, but I mean he made. <laughs> Here's a texture usage manual. Here's a screen printing manual that goes through like your different settings for like separating colors, doing all that good stuff. Here's a reference for all the textures. Here's like a manual to get you started quickly. Um, here's, look, he literally gives you uh, flat stock and textile sample work orders. Um, like you could literally take his logo out here and start mm -hmm. a business. Like this thing costs $29, but I mean, just do one single extra job because you have this pack and you've like paid for this many, many times over. Here's professional mock-ups. Again, you could send these to Lenny and have him print it for you, or you could just pull this out, make this into your own work order, start putting these on the shirts. You're looking super legit and you're ready to start making money from this. This literally is like, it sounds shamwild again, but it's a money-making machine. It really is. Yep. Um, and here's, you literally just saw this being done. So these photos, yeah, these were from the actual making of the original of the textures in the pack. And yeah, here it is on the shirt, right? Just so subtle. I love that. Yeah. So here's the shirt. If you buy, if you buy the pack when you're on the call, you're going to be entered to win one of three of these shirts. And I don't know if you can see it through this video, but you see how there's like these like subtle things here. This is from that pack. Literally the pack you are looking at is what these textures were used from. It does not look digital. It doesn't look fake. It looks like the paint flaked off when it was printed and yet it didn't it's crazy it really is um yeah and you can see i mean he's, he's done this a ton here's a bunch of posters he's printed with this pack so yeah um grab it support us if this sounds like something that's interesting and would be useful for you in your work and 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 you know what i i certainly as much as anybody knows you know how you know it's hard to part with with our money so honestly that's another reason that like Dustin and I just said, let's just show people how to make them. Like I would love as much as I'd love for you to buy them and, and support Dustin and support myself. Like it's fun to do this stuff because it is so like you can make in 15 minutes, you can make 30, 40 different textures. And it's very freeing in sort of this age of like, you know, where we tend to sit down and labor over something for weeks or months to just sort of have fun and like almost finger paint again. Like when we were a kid, you know, man. Yeah. That's the thing about it is, you know, sometimes I'll like get so stressed as I'm working or I'll just be doing something and realize I'm doing it, kind of hating it while I'm doing it and wishing I was doing something else. And then you get a pack yeah. like this or you just even go to this webinar like this and you're, and you're seeing it done and you realize, man, there's so much like fun little stuff you don't even realize exists. That's awesome. So, um, yeah. Anyways, let's continue with this. Um, Lenny, can you share some common, let's, we'll get into the Q&A right after this because we have a good amount of questions. 
but can you yeah. like share some myths of textures that about textures that people might have, especially um, connected to the anxiety of sending it to a printer as a printer that gets these, what are some things that people worry way too much about that might be like terrorizing them? So I think for me, the number one thing, and, and I, you know, we say myths, but I probably think misconceptions because like you're not wrong if you use vector textures. That's certainly not what we're saying because you know Dustin even sells them. Um, so you're not wrong, but we've certainly realized that like there's better ways to utilize our time than watching the spinning beach ball on our computer. Um, so I think you know one of them is that they don't have to be vector, obviously. Um, and and I think some of that comes into you know and the the first argument maybe people will throw out is well what if what if you want to you know make it the size of a billboard you know they, you know they talk about scalability. So I've been doing this for 25 years and I can't recall any time in 25 years where I've finished up something and a year later needed to scale it up to the size of a billboard. Um, you know, very rare, you know, almost always, if we really think about it, we're probably creating artwork at the, at the size that we want to create it and print it at. So we're pretty safe sort of optimizing the workflow for that specific size. So I think that's one of the things that get people hung up with like vector textures and computer performance is wanting to make sure it, it has the ability to do something that probably will never be done at a size that will probably never be printed. Um, you know, does that, that make sense? Like just not, not worrying so much about it, I think is one of the things. Um, I think the other thing too is like with, with textures, um, you know, we always talk about like, especially in typography, don't stretch or squish type. Totally true, because that looks like crap, but do it with textures, like play with it. You know, you can, these textures, that there's 72, almost 100 textures in the pack, but if you use, you know, Illustrator now has cropping, and if you use clipping masks, and then you stretch, there's a new word, stretch and squash, well, my God, you've got four times that in the textures because you can squash them and smash them and pull them apart. And all of a sudden it's a new texture because you've taken one that's all, you know, this big and now you've made it this big and it, and it still works, but it looks different. So like, don't be afraid. I think another myth is like, don't be afraid to to sort of get in there and do the things that you're told not to do in design, which is just, you know, willy nilly stretch and squash stuff. Um, and I think the the other one is and my train of thought just left the building so i just said stretch squash doesn't have to be vector holy crap what was the third one <laughs> it's great to do these at night because so many people get to come and then it's like the end of the day and you're like what am i trying to say um that that uh, okay, it's going to come back to me. <laughs> well, in the meantime, I'll say, well, we'll get into some questions and I bet one of them will like, will peak, Probably. peak your mind. Um, real quick shout out, just thanks to people. I wanted to, uh, I just always like to verbally thank them. Thank you, John, Braxton, Polly, Joel, Annie, Cheney, Mary, Dave, Rob, Sarah, um, Susan. Thank you so much, you guys. It, um, and I know we're, we're selling something like I, I think is awesome and 100% like amazing for your work, but it's also, it never stops. You never stop feeling this um, like automatic response of gratefulness that people are supporting the business. So, so thank you for that. Um, but anyways, like I was going to say, would it be it, basically, it sounds like the underlying thing is it would be fair to say we don't need to be so anxious about the work we're doing. Yeah. Problems will happen, but much less than you think do these strange things come up that everyone's so concerned about? Exactly. And I just remembered the third one. So see, thank you. There you go. Perfect. Um, the third myth is generally speaking, yes, you want to be, um, I'll say the word thoughtful with your texture usage, right? Um, in terms of like making sure that it's sort of just is just right of the, so it looks like it's real, right? We don't want to, like we wouldn't want to use a half tone texture and a not half tone texture together. I mean, again, you can, if you want to break the rules, you can, but that would look weird. Like generally, if you're looking at weathering and texturing, it would have the same sort of, if it's scraped, then everything should kind of be scraped. If it's half toned, then everything would sort of be half toned. Um, but one of the things is like, don't be afraid to put like a really, really light amount of texture, but, more importantly, don't be afraid to sometimes slap something on there and even though you busted your ass on that artwork, to destroy 60% of it with the texture. Like sometimes that just, 
all of a sudden you're like, wow, that looks amazing when you've just gritted away 60% of it and you make it look like it's been on the side of a brick wall, getting the crap beat out of it in the weather for 40 years. Um, it can be sort of fun and freeing to not give your work so much reverence, you know, to not be afraid to be like, yeah, that looks cool. Eh, I'm going to destroy it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, there's definitely times when things are awesome destroyed. And uh, I think when we did, okay, so I got to tell you guys this story. Um, when Lenny did my shirt, my recent, the Skull Retro Supply shirts, he had just finished this pack and we just put it up for sale. And I said, man, you should really use these textures on my, on my shirt because it'd be great to be able to show people, you know, these in action. And um, so he did, but even though I knew he did this for a living, even though he had just made the pack, it's like, I felt like Indiana Jones, remember when he asked to like to get to that, some treasure or something he has to walk across across the canyon and it looks like it's he's walking into thin air but there's actually this like thing to walk on dustin i swear i was literally watching that a little bit of that movie <laughs> okay so you remember yeah, yeah. it's like it, it was like this the whole idea behind it was this leap of faith that or this step of faith he had to take and then it turns out it's an illusion and you can actually walk on it and so i had him use the lightest texture on mine and it turned out awesome I actually wish it was, a, I wish I had gone with an even grittier one, but I mean, yeah, you can see here, it looks great. It was a light one. It didn't, it doesn't dominate the design, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. It's, it looks like you've had the shirt for three years and we've already printed two batches of them. It not, not even in the last three months, we printed the first batch in time for Halloween. And then we've already printed an entire another batch because those sold so quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's so another that interesting thing about this is, yeah. The, 250 this, shirts, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I can't promise you that the textures were why I sold out of these shirts, but they did sell out. There might be a correlation. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. I'm going to say yes. I'll say yes, too. Yeah. Just don't bring, yeah. <laughs> Just don't hold me to it. <laughs> I don't think it hurt, though. Like, I know I love that shirt because I always keep a couple of the shirts that you make for me for my own personal use. And I kept that one, uh, multiple ones of it, particularly because I like that texture on it. Because I think yeah. you know, it's, it looks so real that you feel like people are like, how did you do that? Um, stop Ivy's watching from the Philippines. My, uh, my daughter is part Filipino because her mom is Filipino. So, hello. And then a thank you to... I can't remember if it's the Sarah, Maria, Nick, um, Alicia. Thank you to all of you. They just grabbed the pack. Okay, let's get into these Q and A's so we can wrap. Yeah, there's 26 questions in there. Tired. Yeah. So um, pull them up, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab a, a thing of water. I'm actually here in the kitchen, so it's super easy. No worries. Actually, water going in the cup. I'm not peeing or anything. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, but William Brownard asked, please do show how to prep for screen printing. I tried to use some of Dustin's old sets for this purpose and my t-shirt printer couldn't make it work. If there is a guide in the pack to doing that, but are you, can you, I feel like that's like a whole webinar. Can you, you probably can't show the prepping. It'd be hard for me to show that like right, right now. Um, just with the time we have, we actually, and we, no dates or anything that we're holding to this, but we are Dustin and myself, and we're going to be working with some other people are going to be working on sort of a screen printing illustration uh, webinar in the somewhat near future. That's going to cover all of that as well. Um, but there are some guides in the pack specifically to using them. And I'm totally happy. You can email me Lenny at heymonkeydesign.com, And I'd be happy to give you a quick run through of that as well. Um, just because I think it would take up a lot of the Q&A time to, to show you. It's not that I don't want to. I just want to make sure everybody can get their questions in. Yeah. And, good, uh, yeah. Good call. I just put you, this is dangerous. No, no, no we're, we're amongst friends, so it's fine. Um, I just put your email in. So, oh, so yeah, I, I completely agree, William. Like, it's a good question. It deserves an answer. It's just too, at this, it's like, you know, we're past the time. It's, already. it's not super complex, but just the amount of the steps, I want to make sure we can get all the questions in. But I'll totally be happy to answer or talk to him privately just if he has specific needs that he's looking for. Cool. Cool. Okay. Or her. Um, I didn't want to assume. Okay. So next question is, Oh, Kelly had asked, um, curious about your method for storage 
of your created textures? Do you have a massive digital library or do you keep the actual textures you create um, as flat files? So I, I'm probably gonna regret this one day, but once I've processed all the textures and I have the processed files all set and done, like in this texture pack, I know space isn't so much of a premium nowadays, but I just tend to get rid of the original scans um, just to not clutter up. I sort of am OCD in my, in my file storage. And if there's something, if I'm not using it, I don't want it sitting there. So I tend to delete the source files, but I keep the actual source files, the paper, the analog. So if I ever needed to recreate or pull something in again, I could just rescan the original pieces of paper. Um, and I just keep those in a big old folder file. Cool. Um, I'm going to kind of do like lightning round here and just kind of flip from one to the other, just purely yeah. to respect people's time. Um, so cool. Great. Um, Lori to ask, I may have missed this, but does Lenny turns, by the way, hi, Lori, me and Lori are, are pretty good friends. So hi, Lori. I just wanted to say hi while I see you here. Yes. Um, Lori to ask, Lori. Yes. 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 So, Y'all seriously go check her out. One of the best vintage retro style illustrators that I think is, is cranking out work right now. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Um, she said, I may have missed this, but does Lenny turn some of these into brushes or just use them as overlays? Um, so for almost all the, the packs, all the packs, all the textures in the pack, like the full page and stuff, um, they're overlays. You totally could use them as stamp brushes, um, but you, to do that in Illustrator, you'd have to then, you know, I think, that'd be interesting. Can you actually use bitmaps as brush sources? I've never tried. I don't think you can. I think you'd have to use live trace and then, you know, take the vector and then you'd fall into the same issue of um, last two guys. We're talking about Lori Rudolph there in the, in the chat. She goes under retro Rudolph killer illustrator. Um, so I haven't actually, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to take some of the bitmap stuff um, and see if you can use them as brush sources. Um, but I do the brushes that are in there. The simple stamp brushes were, made using the same uh, resources. So I, I scanned the textures, pulled them in, and then I just did some live tracing in Illustrator just to make some very small stamp brushes just to be able to throw something in there kind of quickly. And honestly, like this is sort of a, a new way of releasing textures as a pack. And I think some of it was like a way to sort of bridge the old and the new. And for future products, Dustin and I release, I'm probably going to like, further commit to like it being all bitmap um to just to kind of i don't know that's just what i'm into right now cool i was trying to before the next question put actually let me try i wanted to put Lori's. i think someone's yeah. asking about a link to her so i want to put her up here um yeah check out Lori's stuff is pretty cool um a little bit of a side note but it's worth checking out um totally uh, Lori asked one more question. Lenny, curious to know if you generally use a couple of different textures in one piece or do you mix things up and use a couple of, oh, she's asking do you use one texture or do you use multiple different textures and mix it up? Um, I will most likely, for the most part, I will use multiple so that way I can sort of control where they, where they lay. Um, when you were going through the, the actual product page and there was the, the picture of the title image, um, that was definitely like a few textures sitting there where I kind of, because there, there was marketing copy on there, so we wanted to make sure that could be read, but then there were other parts that I wanted to make sure were, um, you know, had some of that, that uh, texture built, you know, built into it. Cool. Eric asks, um, I don't know if we can really do this now, but he says, would love to see what you do for getting image ready to output on clear film. There, that, so that's, that's, yeah, that's talking about screen printing, like a, like a, a transparency film, I'm assuming. If, if, he's, if he's here, he can chime in on that. Um, so this kind of goes back to the other screen printing question um, from, from the other person. And you know what, I will, I'll just talk it through real quick. Essentially what you would do is you would break your Illustrator file out and you'd have a layer per color, you know, if it's a multiple color. So let's take the Retro Supply shirt, for instance. There were um, three layers in that. There was the navy layer, which was the outline of the, of the dude. There was the red layer, which was the overalls. And then I had a texture layer. Um, when you're printing films, everything has to be 100% black, no matter what color you're going to screen print it, because you want to print the films as black. So when you want to prep your texture for screen printing, what you would do 
is you would actually take your texture and turn it to white so it looks like it's knocked out of the black layers. So you just revert, you know, the texture comes in black. I literally just sample it as white so then it looks like it's masked out of the black layers underneath. And so when the film prints, it will have the texture knocked out of the design. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. I think, hopefully that made sense when I say it. Totally makes sense if I could show it, but um, which we will on future webinars, or I'm going to be working on some uh, articles for for the Retro Supply blog as well, and maybe that, not even maybe, I think we even talked about that sort of being one of them, kind of how to prepare your art for screen printing. So keep keep uh, stay tuned for that too. Well, I'm flying out there um, at least once, probably multiple times. So one of the times I'm out there, maybe we'll do like a, a live thing when I'm out there and we can show people. That'd be pretty fun. We can. So we're getting ready to, we can make the, here we go. We'll, we'll a very special announcement. If whoever's in or near North Carolina, or if you're just dying to come to a killer conference, again, Dustin said, I'm president of AIGA Raleigh and we're throwing our second Thrive Conference in March on the 15th and 16th of March. Um, we haven't announced it publicly, though I think that was going to happen either this week or next, but uh, Dustin is actually coming out as a speaker and as a workshopper talking about uh, passive income and all that. So Brian, um, no but the people in this chat, Dustin is going to be here uh, doing a talk and a workshop on, on stuff. So he's going to be here, be able to get to meet him, get to hang out. I think I've bullied him into having a merch table. We're going we're gonna to try to get that set up for him. Um, maybe have some of those great shirts to sell and some other stuff um, that I'll print. So if you guys can, uh, yeah, that's right, Brian, that was not in the last Thrive email because we're, we're dribbling it out. So Dustin is actually the next announcement. So you're getting the special super secret announcement right here. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to come to that, um, we're getting the full site up, Thrive. And I don't know, I don't know how much yeah. you've shared, so I won't share it, but I will say, this is something that if you live anywhere in the vicinity, I wouldn't miss. There will be people you will want to see there. hundred percent. So it's going to be, uh, our already announced speakers. So now we've got Dustin doing a talk and workshop. We've got, um, Amy and Jen hood that are coming to do a talk and we think they're doing a workshop. We got the man himself. Draplin is coming to do a talk and a workshop. Um, and we've got some other great speakers. Ade Hogue, great hand letterer. Uh, Jessica Bellamy, a social activist designer, and we've still got some more talent to be announced as well. And we're going to have talks and workshops. Um, so come check it out. It's going to be a fun little conference. Um, I'm excited just to have Dustin come to where I live and we get to hang out and do stuff. But maybe, maybe if we can squeeze it in, maybe we'll do a little impromptu live from the studio thing or something. Man, that'd be cool. Yeah. You should put the um, link to the Thrive in there if you're able for anyone that I lives did. around I the area. I did. I just it up earlier. Um, let, me, let me do it one more time. Live. Okay, time. cool. There we um, go. Okay, yeah. Now, now it'll the just go to the Eventbrite ticket page. We'll have a full cool. Um, okay, so next question is: Justin has a very reasonable question. So, how large can you go with these textures? Um, I've scaled my textures up again. I pull them in at eight by ten. That's how kind of how I scan them. I've scaled them up to 18 by 24 posters. That tends to be about the largest I personally print and they look fantastic. Cool. And then Seth um, with two upvotes asked, which is a lot, most people just have one. Um, is there anything special I need to do to prep these files when sending to my screen printer? Great question since you're talking to a screen printer. Yes. So there, is there something special? Now only in kind of what I had said earlier is once if you're, if you're sending an illustrator file to your screen printer, um, First, make sure that the texture file, the PNG, is actually embedded in your Illustrator document, or make sure you actually send the texture file with the Illustrator document so the screen printer can, you know, link to it so it's linked. Um, that's the common thing. People either forget to embed it and link it and stuff like that. Um, but then the other thing is, is just to make sure that the texture itself is set to white, the color, so it knocks out of the art for your, for your screen printing. So it's not really anything special um, aside from the making sure your texture is white. Cool. Um, Jeremy had asked, maybe too specific for screen printing when using a bitmap texture and outputting film, how do you quickly trap your base? The main reason I end up using vector textures is to easily choke the base. 
So if, if he's talking about trapping it like within a certain uh, shape, um, just, you just use, I just use a clipping mask. Um, if that's what he's talking about, um, you know, where you can take the shape. So you'll have the shape, I'll copy and duplicate the shape and then use that shape to mask the texture file. Cool. Um, and then Sarah had asked, maybe I've missed this. Have you tried using this pack in procreate? So you, Dustin and I had just talked about that. It should work fine, but we don't know a hundred percent. And that would be something that's good to check. Um, pulling those in and then tapping the color. As a matter of fact, I should grab my iPad and try it while we're sitting here. Um, but I think we need to, yeah, I think we need to experiment that. We were talking about that the other night. Yeah. Um, if, if you it can't... does work. There is a, a very cool illustration app uh, for the iPad called Concepts. Um, if people like to play around with different things. And I know transparent PNGs work in that only because I think Von Glitchka had tried it and said it worked. Concepts. I'll put a link to it. <clears throat> yeah, con Concepts app, I think, or something like that. It's a fun program to play with. Cool. And just so you, just like a little heads up, if you, if you grab this and you use Procreate, and if for any reason it didn't work, grab it. And, and if it doesn't work, just email me. We have a 30-day refund um, policy. So if, if, if it doesn't work, you just write me, tell me it doesn't work, we'll give you your money back. We have someone that um, is here Monday through Friday that will make sure to follow up within 24 hours and get you your money back. We don't want you to have something you're not going to use. So if that's ever the case. And, not only, wait. and you get your money back, but you let them keep the product too, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I figured since it's a digital <laughs> download, I can't force you to get rid of it. Might as well make it an advantage and let you have it. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you're a Procreate user and it's not working in Procreate, you can get your money back. You still get to keep the product. And then if you decide to crack open Illustrator or a program that does it, you've still got full reign to, to use those products. Cool. Yep, exactly. Um, Zachary asked, I'd like to know how you export out of Illustrator or if you copy it into Photoshop to save out for printing and digital. Sometimes Illustrator has some weird export artifacts. So it's funny that you say that. And I, I don't know if it's a per computer thing, but I do all my film printing from Illustrator. I get the reverse in Photoshop where it just for some reason, when I print films from Photoshop, they're just not, uh, they're just not as good for me, you know? So I think that could be on a per user basis. So even if I get art that's layered and created in Photoshop, I export each layer from Photoshop as a, a TIFF or a PNG and then relayer them in Illustrator because I tend to get better results printing from illustrator so i think that could totally be a either my computer's messed up or it's just you know depending on whatever settings people are using for their printer what kind of film they're using if they're using rip software things like that great just answering a question here um william brown had asked is 300 dpi your standard for saving the png yes okay cool um, and then Justin said, so is it because you did the 50% bitmap texture that it gives you the ability to recolor it? Um, or he said 50% threshold. And that answer is no. The fact is that it's grayscale, correct? Correct. So to do, to get to bitmap, you'll take it from, and, and Andy is sort of asked something in the chat and he may have done it in the Q and a too. Um, once you got your texture brought into Photoshop and, um, so yeah, brought into Photoshop and got it all processed with levels and all that kind of stuff. I take it to grayscale and then from grayscale, uh, I'll flatten it and then take it to bitmap, which is where you can pick the halftone screen or 50% threshold. And then when you save it as either a TIFF or a PNG file, that's what allows you to do that recoloring in Illustrator. And one thing I want to mention is I, I didn't do this on the thing, but you can totally, if you want to make sure that you can go up to like 24 by 36 or bigger poster size or whatever, you absolutely can just use uh, in Photoshop upsample that thing to 600 or 1200 DPI. Cause again, it's a texture. So even if you get some weird artifacting, once you re grayscale and bitmap it, it's still, it looks great. You don't have to worry about like making it larger and it looking crappy cause it's a texture. It's supposed to look crappy. <laughs> cool. Um, Alicia had said, so when you convert the texture to a bitmap, it makes it one bit? Yes. Nice. 
Haley had asked, one thing I've noticed while using bitmaps is the color won't apply itself unless you're using a swatch to color it. For example, if it's just the eyedropper color, it won't apply. Have you found this to be true? No, because that's I, I, I dropped from like the background color of that of that image, and I know I've altered the color, so I haven't found that to be true. I think I'm getting what she's saying. I think so too. I haven't known, found that to be true too, unless I'm misunderstanding. Um, can you unite those with Pathfinder? I don't. Do you know what they're talking about? I felt like that was some specific thing back. So that's good. If we jump over to chat real quick, Seth had chimed in and and this has happened to me. If she puts the, the, if you put the image on top of your illustrator thing and then try to click on the background layer, you're actually clicking on the image, Mm. not the color underneath. You think you are because it's transparent and I've done it too. I still do it because I'm an idiot sometimes and just forget, you know, on my own stuff. Um, I always have to remember to slide the image away, select the color, then I can slide the image back. I don't know if that's the same issue as, as she's having with the swatch problem, but um, as Seth mentioned, that sometimes that is a reason because we think we're clicking on the background, but we're actually clicking on the overlaid image, which again, I still do it and I make these things. So, duh, me. Um, can you use the same edge bitmap to create a brush in Photoshop for my flexible usage? Oh, wait, I, I can't tell if that's a question or a statement. Like, can, is it possible? It, it is possible. Can we make that? Um, we're not making that for this pack. We do have some edge brushes in retro supply. You could grab though, if that's what, if that's what you're referring to that do a similar thing. Killer brushes too. Yep. Um, can you use them as a mask in illustrator? That's a good question. So you, yeah, I wonder if it would, um, I know you can use a, obviously an illustrator shape as a mask for the bitmap but I don't think it would recognize the transparent shape if you tried to use it as a mask. Um, actually, I have Illustrator still open. I'm gonna try it. I think it would just recognize that as a, um, you know, as a rectangle image. Let me see here, object, arrange, bring to front. Um, Quick thank you to yeah, so so you can't use it in Illustrator to make a clipping mask because the the top object or the mask object has to be a compound shape, text object or group of those. So it won't recognize the bitmap as the shape. Okay, great. Um, Ron had asked Lenny, do you prefer working with water based inks or plastisol inks? Hundred percent water based. Never actually touch plastisol ink unless I've live pr- done a live print at another event, you know, that I've been to. And why that's, why, that's why my shirts are so soft or yeah. Dustin's shirts are so soft. <laughs> Your shirts too. I was wearing one just the other day. Yeah. Yes. Especially and like that, that one we did for the mystery tees that, that thing's so soft. Yeah. And you don't, and you can still get those nice textures like you get with Plastisol after it's cracked a little bit with this texture packer by making your own textures. Yep. Um, looks like that question was answered. Um, Tommy just said, hope you both continue these. These have been amazing. Definitely will um, continue these. Thank you. That's, I appreciate that. Um, Edward said, did you say do not use a thresh? Did you say do not to use a threshold method texture and a dot method texture in the same illustration? Well, I'm not saying to not do it. You do whatever you want, right? You know the rules and you can break them. It would just be weird. I mean, if you sort of think realistically speaking, if something is weathered, it would sort of have the same kind of weathering. So you wouldn't have something that's sort of half-toned and then something that looks very organically scraped um, together. The thing that is good with half-toning is if you want to, for me, I use half-toning if I want to retain some value so the illusion of lights and darks in a texture, right? Because half toed dots that are close together, right? Everything's going to appear dark. And the further you pull them apart and size them, that's what gives you the illusion of light to dark. Um, so when I, when I want to use half tones is when I want to actually give something light to dark value in my texture. And I'll just say why, why we're talking about this, I'll just add to this that I get tagged a lot on Instagram. I asked to be tagged for retro supply to see the different work people are doing. And um, by far the biggest 
crime I feel like that's committed is that people will buy a pack or multiple packs and then they'll like kind of just pile on all sorts of random things. And so you're just like, well, there's no way that would ever happen in real life. And in fact, you see this even in retail stores and shirts on shirts and posters and different things. Like they'll be like, I don't even know, like reversed halftone things that don't really exist in real life or weird overlays of different color halftones that might somehow be done. And honestly, like, because like I've had the shop forever, like I feel a responsibility and that's why we're actually, I haven't told a lot of people this, but we're creating a learn dot retro supply area where it's going to have like little courses because I feel like it's kind of my responsibility for customers to be able to like give them some ideas on that. But yeah, like oftentimes, like, like Lenny said, a little goes a long way. One of the biggest mistakes I see is people just go crazy sometimes um, with stuff. And we talked about that in the myths. Like sometimes it's fun to go crazy and degrade the work, but try to think um, realistically. And that's something that um, that's something that actually I learned learned or, or was reiterated from from Draplin, who's you know just such a master at sort of you know making sure that things are still authentic and real. And that's to think about give the thing a story. Like if you're going to texture something, why are you texturing it? Okay. I'm picturing that this was an ad on the side of a wall of an old garage. What would the texture be? It'd probably be scraped from people walking by it or like oil splatters on it or grease that ate away the paint. So think about what, where the texture is coming from realistically and then look for a texture or now you guys know how make sure that we'll let you do that. Totally. It sounds like it sounds dorky to get that far into it, but it's so true. Like sometimes, like for instance, I saw someone do it really well where they would have aging. They had aging, I think it was on their card and they had done it around the edges where your thumbs would naturally touch it. And so it just made sense when you saw it, you're like, yeah, yeah, that actually like is why it would be like that, you know, as opposed yep. to like across the center or something. Um, so people obviously don't always follow that stuff, but it, it kind of, I think adds like a fun, imaginate put some imagination to it um edward yep. said when you send an illustration file to a printer do you have to send the photoshop texture files with it um it'd be good to i mean if you embed it in illustrator if you're sending an illustrator file and you embed it then you don't have to because it you know illustrator literally has it within the file if you just have it linked then yes you need to make sure you send the file with it the png or or bitmap or tiff so that way the link is valid and it shows up, you know, like when I open up the file. Um, by far, the two biggest things I have to go back to people for are, are fonts, typefaces not outlined, and files, usually textures not linked. Mm, so I try to tell people to embed them. Um, and again, that's another great reason, like why I like using PNG files. A lot of people didn't want to embed bitmap graphics in Illustrator because it would jack the file size up because they were using like 300 DPI, big full color things. You know, we're using one bit transparent PNG files. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna drag down your file. Um, how do you say this, Lenny? J-A-C-Q-U-E, is that Jock? Jock, yeah. Okay, Jock. He says, I use a lot of brushes in my Illustrator images and bog down my computer. If I used more of Lenny's textures instead of so many brushes, would that help not bog down my computer? Thank you for this webinar. Awesome. It definitely, I mean, I can't say definitely would. If you think you can get the same look you want in your artwork, don't sacrifice your vision and your artwork for the sake of performance. If you need to do what you need to do, do it. I mean, yes, using edge textures and, and again, with illustrators cropping and masking almost any texture in that pack could become an edge texture or shape texture. But there are a, a lot more brush packs coming out that are taking that into mind, like the, um, the pack you worked on with Adam, the gouache shaders. Um, those have amazing performance in Illustrator. And, you know, and, and if you go back and look, I guess, in some archives somewhere, like there's, you know, the webinar that uh, you did with Adam and, you know, he was showing it and it was like amazing to me. Um, like looking at a illustrator brush for shading and texturing and it, the performance still being there. So there's definitely uh, makers like Dustin and I know there's other good ones out there too, who are making vector uh, assets that are performance minded as well. 
Yeah. It took me a while to really realize that, but yeah. Um, yeah. So important. Um, we're just about wrapped up here. So just, just so you guys know, we're going to wrap this up like literally in the next five minutes. So if you want to grab the pack and enter for the shirt, um, now is the time. Um, Jeff had asked Lenny, I know this will be another web topic, but I would like to know if you use the same process for DTG printing. So I don't do any DTG printing, so I don't know what the setup process for that is. Um, for people that I'm don't not know, what is people. DTG printing? So DTG is direct to garment. So it's basically, right, you see those big old inkjet printers, basically, but it prints on shirts instead of paper. Um, and what they're good for, to me, I don't like the feel of them personally, though, they, again, they are getting better. Um, but they're really great for somebody who wants two or three shirts, right? Because it's really counterproductive for a screen printer to just do. Uh, okay, she said it's Jackie. All right, Jackie, sorry about that. Yeah, I was saying, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And, and it's a, yep, and it's a, and it's a, yep, there we go, Jackie. Um, where was I? Train of thought got lost. I just wanted to make sure that we called out that we mispronounced and know her name. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So for DTG. So I don't know exactly how file setup is for that. Um, I think it's different because when you print the shirt, you're generally printing everything at once, you know, just like an inkjet printer. You know, you're not running it through multiple times. Um, so I'm sure the file setup is different. I know you would knock the texture out of, I think, in white um, to make sure that the texture shows on a DTG print. Cool. Good question. That's a good question, though. I've never thought of that. Yeah. Um, Neil says, I got a timer going, by the way. So we got six minutes approximately. I'm shutting it down. Um, <laughs> Neil, Neil had asked, will these techniques work for art that will be offset printed? Um. As far as like the, the texturing techniques that should, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, and then Ben said about screen printing, oh, wait, someone answered this. Can you just say if you need to trap the artwork in Photoshop to get a choked underbase? Yes or no is a fine answer. So read it again. I just want to make sure I answer it right. Sure. And then I'll, I'll tell you, oh, he added to it. So it says about screen printing. Can you just say if you need to trap the artwork in Photoshop to get a choked underbase? Yes or no is a fine answer. And then he added to that, it sounds like you're using water-based inks and they don't have the same docking issues that Plastisol has. So probably not a thing you deal with. So yes, okay. So yes and no. It's going to be depending on the colors you're printing, what you're printing on. So what he's talking about trapping and choking is um, making sure that like when things touch, that, you know, if you have little registration slides that they still touch and so textures and all that, just like a way to make sure that your registration lines up and, and things line up um, well, but still gives you a little bit of leeway for, you know, what would be little registration slips and stuff, especially if you're a hand printer like I am. Um, so it's going to come down to, you know, colors you're printing. You know, if you're with water base, you're going to have your colors, you're going to be able to see through them more because they're more translucent than Plastisol. So I don't do as much trapping with water-based as I would probably if I was a Plastisol printer. I try to just be really precise in my printing and make sure things like touch and, and, uh, and just work properly like that. Just so I don't have the risk of colors overlapping and seeing what would be a third produced color when those colors mix. George Ann, I might have said that wrong. It might be Georgian. I think it's George Ann, um, had said, what tips for the textures not closing up when screen printing? Um, for that, it's just going to be to work with your screen printer and, and let him, you know, try to tell you or her, um, let them tell you, um, if they think that texture is too fine of detail to come out and it's going to happen to a degree for some, like I always tell people who have a lot of really fine texture work on it, like, Hey, all of this detail may not translate out, but I think most of it will, you know, we just try to kind of just throw up the flag of like, should be fine, but we're letting you know that it's possible that you'll lose some of the texture in the, uh, in the screen print process. Seems like it would be a bit of an art, like you, how, you know, how heavily you 
ink your screen and how big the texture is and just getting to know your own setup or the, yeah. that person knowing their setup. Yep. And it'll depend too on like colors. Like if you're, if the thing you're textured is white, white is a very, very thick ink. So it stays opaque, you know, on a dark garment, mm -hmm. you're going to lose more of your fine details and little dots and stuff. Cause the white ink just isn't going to push through some of those little tiny, you know, spaces on the screen. But if you're using black or Navy or red, which is a very runny, you know, ink, you know, it's going to very, it's going to go through those little spaces and little holes much easier. So you would probably retain the texture more depending on the color you were using or the knock, you know, the knocked out color for the same thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, okay. And final question we're answering for the night is, can you use bitmap textures in affinity designer? I think so. I believe so. I've, I've just started playing with um, Affinity Designer. Let's open up Affinity Designer real quick and just see if Affinity Designer. I'm almost sure you can. And while you're doing that, quick thanks to Esther Gregory um, for grabbing the pack. Yes, my gosh, so many, so many thank yous to people who, who bought it. I, I appreciate it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Document. Okay. And I'm just going to drag one of these. Let's see. File. Daniel says, thanks for doing this webinar, guys. I'm already looking around my space for things to take textures from. I'm trying to think if I can, if there's anything else like really unique that I've taken them from. Cookie sheets are so good, which Vaughn had come up with. The bottom of any pots or pans is really good. Um, chipboard, like you said, is really good. Oh, you know what? Oil stains in your garage, like if you have them, or if you don't, even sometimes just the natural texture of garage, whatever they do, they put a coating on it, will look good. That's something I've used at times. Yeah, I pulled a texture into Affinity Designer and it's not acting like I want it to. Like I'm seeing some of the color, but it seems to be on the outlines of some of the pieces. So I'm wondering if um, it might not support it in PNG files. I'm going to play around with that a little bit because that'll be good for us to know for um, future packs. That would be. And plus, once we know, I can add to the Q&A at the bottom. We, we do Q&As at the bottom of the products, and then we can let people know so people with Affinity can grab it if it works. So, Lori, real quick, Lori, you pulled it into Procreate and it had to multiply to make it work, but were you able to actually color the texture like with a swatch in Procreate, or did that not work? We'll let her answer there. Mm -hmm. And um, we are, we have started to work on, I, 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 I would assume it's okay to say it because you know we want people to know things are coming out. The reason aside from this webinar that I have all these materials here for textures is we are starting the, the sequel pack to the, to the toolkit as well. Um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from people on things they'd like to see more of um, from the first pack. So we're gonna create uh, more products based off of this. They'll definitely have specific usages. So it's just not more of the same. I mean, there may be some more of the same, but we're definitely going to um, tilt it in different directions. So we have some really useful, you know, additional items for it as well. Yeah, for sure. Like a lot, a lot of times what we'll do with retro supply, there we go. Um, lots of times what we do with retro supply products is we'll release a first product, which is kind of like the classic all encompassing pack. And then if that's, something that people like, and we kind of obviously judge that by how many people buy, then we'll, we'll kind of start to build a tree is how I think of it, where we'll make branches that explore different parts of the pack so people can geek out on their favorite part of the pack with what we make. Um, so yeah, and I mean, if, if you grab this pack right now, which it seems like a lot of you did, you'll see, Lenny makes really solid packs. They're very thorough. Um, he's making another one. I'm so, ex I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for it. It's been an, honor to finally have him work on a pack with me we've talked about it literally for years literally years. literally <laughs> years. and he delivered when he when 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 we finally had time to do it so Lori said i i meant to try to pull the color over from the palette on the textures it did not fully cover it alpha lot colored the entire png um so it's hit miss. we'll have to look into okay. that but there's a way to do it um okay cool well we 
I told you this, I was going to keep this right on schedule and we did get it done on schedule. We just answered a lot of questions. Um, but oh my God, we did. Yeah, we did. That's good though. That's like, hopefully we answered a lot of things for people that was useful. Um, Absolutely. Any parting words, Lenny, before I um, shut it down? Just first, thank you for not only being here tonight or early this evening, late this evening, right? Us, us East Coasters, we're 11 o'clock. Anybody in the middle and on the, on the other side, it's a little bit earlier. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for the awesome questions. Uh, thank you for buying it both if you've already bought it or if you bought it tonight. Um, it's a huge thing. You know, it has been my first product ever. Again, Dustin and I, so we've been talking for years and we finally like nailed on the thing that, you know, that works. It's been an absolute pleasure to make it work on it with Dustin. And we've got a lot of really cool things planned for the rest of the year too. Like 2019, we're going to, by the end of 2019, you're going to be like, not this guy again because we're going to make some cool stuff. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, uh, what he said. I, I don't have much to add to that other than thank you. Appreciate that you guys pay attention, and I quite literally mean that. You know, you're paying with your time and your eyeballs to listen to what we have to say, and I'm glad it's helpful, and thank you for doing that. Um, appreciate it. And we will do another webinar in the near future, so you guys have a great night. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Just so you guys know, on the t-shirts, I'm going to, tomorrow, when I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I'm going to go through all the purchases of the pack, the packs that happened during the time period of the webinar, and I'm essentially going to just randomly choose three. So I will send an email to each of you that won. I did not forget about that. I just want to make sure I do it properly, um, not just subconsciously favoring people or something right now. And um, you know what? For each winner, I will, I don't know what, but I will throw in something into that as well. So Dustin will send a shirt and I'll send something. I just need to go to the studio and see what all sorts of cool some things I have there. So you will get the shirt and you will get some sort of secret surprise gift. And maybe each person that, is it just one person that's going to win or were there a few people? Three. Three? Okay. So each person will, I will just pick a random thing from my, from my studio, pennants, buttons, stickers, shirts, whatever, and send something to each person as well. So I'll you'll get two packages, one from, one from the West Coast, one from the East. <laughs> Can't ask for better than that. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Well, thank you, all of you. Thank you, Lenny, for being so generous, and um, we yeah. will talk to you soon. Thanks, y'all. Bye, guys.